We are excited to be with you and that you joined us for Look Before You Leap, First Steps to Entrepreneurship Success Online Series. This is a four series part presentation that takes you through the fundamental stages of owning and operating a small business. The first week we talked about defining the idea, looking at if the idea makes market sense, how to make your business a legal entity and writing a business plan. Last week, we moved forward with looking a little bit deeper into the financial fundamentals with your business finances and how to create a budget and how to manage your personal finances effectively and how that impacts your business financial behavior. Tonight, we will explore the questions of what exactly is branding? You know, what comes first, marketing or branding? To help us navigate through these questions is Bendel Parker. Bendel is the winner of the Commonwealth Catholic Charities Mind Your Business Pitch Competition. Last fall, we hosted a nine-week small business course focused on providing participants with the fundamental stages of owning and operating a small business. The participants gained training, workshops, and support and one-on-one -on -one business counseling with an experienced business coach, Pat Hood, who presented at our first uh, webinar. And then the participants had a chance to compete against each other for an opportunity to take part in a grand prize, cash pra uh, prize to help their business. And we are so excited to have Ben Dell to join us. He competed against 15 other businesses and was the winner. Uh, ben Dell is a brand building expert. I'm going to let him tell you more about his business, but his agency works with small to mid-sized businesses. He strives to accelerate and polish brands with his specialty, including business personality building and brand growth approaches. Ben Dell, welcome. We're so excited to have you with us tonight. I'm going to let you tell us more about your business and get us started down the path for answering those important questions about branding. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Michelle, for that introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, as Michelle stated, my name is Ben Dell Parker. I'm uh, last year's winner of the Mind Your Business competition. Um, and I am the principal and uh, managing director for Brand Topology, um, which is a brand strategy consultant agency. Um, before we jump in, I just want to kind of do a little iceberg and give you a little, a uh, few tidbits about myself. Um, as I stated, my name is Bendel Parker. I'm a native of Richmond. Uh, I am the husband, and I'm a husband and the father of two beautiful little girls. Um, one is seven, the other is two, um, Brooklyn and Journey. Um, I'm a lover of Blazers basketball, so I'm a lifetime Portland Trail Blazers fan. Uh, I'm a big Raiders fan. Um, I love kickbacks with my family and friends and good cognac, if you like that type of thing. Um, most importantly, I like to just say I'm blessed. You know, I'm lucky. Um, and in addition to all of this, again, I was uh, the grand prize winner of the first ever Mind Your Business course. Um, just to give you a few tidbits about my business, um, uh, again, um, I'm a brand strategy consultant um, and a director and founder of Brand Topology LLC. Um, and what I like to say I do is I leverage culture, uh, creativity, and problem-solving frameworks uh, to deliver solutions um, to small and large brands. And in a sense, that just basically means that I help to build and polish brands. Um, and there you see you know, my logo to the left, which is actually a relatively new logo. And that's pretty much it about me. Um, so I like to kind of begin the process um, by getting started and giving guys some ideas. Um, so branding, you know, we hear this word a lot. And it's, in, in a sense, it's become a buzzword as well, right? So we hear brand, build your brand, personal brand, but exactly what is that? Um, so I want to really start by addressing what branding is not. Um, so branding is not your logo. Um, it is not your packaging, right? So your logo and your packaging are just image choices, ultimately. Um, it's not your marketing activities. It's not your catchphrase. It's not your tagline, your promotions. And it's not even your product, 
um, it's, it's real easy to assume that your product is somehow your brand. Um, it's a common misconception, but it's really not. Um, a brand is essentially this. Um, it is the essence of who you are as a company. Uh, it is your distinct and intangible values. Um, your company is an entity. Uh, your product is a thing. It's a commodity, a service, or a good. But your brand is your unique persona. It's the thing that cuts across all of your messaging. It cuts across all of your offerings. Um, and it's what your product represents in the mind, first of yourself, and then in the mind of your target consumers. Um, a good way to think about it is, uh, if your brand was a person, who would it be? Because um, like a person, your brand has a unique character, a personality, a mystique all of its own. And that mystique and that personality is reflected in the outward expression of your brand. Um, so for example, we know somebody who, let's say, might be fashionable. We might call that person or he or she a fastinista, if you will. Um, and maybe their, their calling card is the way that they dress. They're professional. Well, that person is not necessarily what they wear, but what they choose to wear is a reflection of their inner values. And it's a reflection of the, the aspirations that they hold there. And in a sense, uh, it is a real stark reflection or one of the reflections of that person's brand, his or her brand. So again, the brand is the soul of a thing, but your marketing and everything that represents on the outside is only representative of your values. So to move forward, um, when we think about a brand, the one thing we'll, a lot of people want to know is how do you go about developing a brand? Um, and there's a couple of steps here. And these are like general steps in a general guide. Um, the first step is to, one, define whether or not you are a commodity or whether you're a brand. You know, as a commodity, it just basically means you have a product or service that could be easily replicated or replaced. Um, for instance, if I'm a maker of paper clips, there's not a lot of room for differentiation in that, right? Um, of course, you can say things that, you know, we, we provide great customer service for all our business clients. You could say that, but that's not necessarily a differentiator, right? Most people try to provide great customer service for their clients. So a brand has in part to do with kind of service or product you have. Uh, number two, um, you have to create a brand position statement. Um, it's like staking your sword in the ground. What do you stand for? What are your values? What's your real mission in life? Again, we all have personal guidelines and personal um, the missions that guide our personal lives, but a brand is much the same way. Um, when you create a brand statement, you're basically saying, I'm standing on this and I'm standing firm on it. Uh, number three, uh, differentiate your brand. Now, unlike the position statement, differentiation is more about the how, right? How am I going to separate myself from the pack? Um, if I'm a baker and, or I make, you know, I make baked goods or personalized baked goods, how do I separate myself um, from others in the industry who may also be targeting my, uh, my main audience? Is it my ingredients? Is it my service? Is it the way that I deliver? Is it the people do I choose to partner with? Um, how do I differentiate myself? Uh, number four is defining your core or target target audience. Um, now, your target audience aren't simply just customers, people who pay for something that you're selling, right? I mean, ultimately, that's the transaction. But what you really want in a, car, uh, in a target audience is you want evangelists, right? You want people who swear by your brand, people who are almost cultish, right? Think of Apple pretty much a cult if you want to really, I mean, if you really want to look at it that way, it's kind of like that, right? Um, but it's because they deliver on their promise time and time again, and they've been doing so for 40 years, close to 40 years. And so that comes from understanding exactly what values your audience has and whether or not those values align with your values as a, co as a company and whether that's a symbiotic relationship. Number five, you want to develop your value proposition. Um, now, your value proposition is similar to differentiation, but it's not quite the same thing. This is values-based, right? What is it that separates me? And what is it about my values 
that are in sync with yours as the customer. Uh, again, my persona versus your persona. Are we a match or are we not? Because this is going to determine whether or not a person just is a one-time customer or whether they're a lifelong customer. Uh, number six, you want to build your brand or build out your brand. And this is the part where you really start to think about the image. You start to think about color templates. You start to think about the logo. You start to think about uh, you know, partners. What stores am I going to use, if any? Am I going to do an online store? Am I going to be, is it going to be boutique where I'm going to deliver my product or service to them personally? Um, these things will help determine um, whether or not your brand is, is a success. This is primarily image-based. Number seven is promotion. Um, promotion is marketing at its best. It's what traction channels, what am I going to use in order to market my product, my service, or my good? Um, is Instagram maybe the way to do this? Is Facebook a good traction channel to promote my product? Should I just stay off? Um, should I should I just stay off of the digital web? I mean, in this day and age, you can't necessarily afford to. But there are companies who've done very well offline because they have a more personal uh, product or service. So you have to decide what your brand is, who your audience is and whether or not your promotion or marketing tactics fit that group or fit that value system. Number eight, you wanna personalize your message. We all, all heard of a demographic. We've all heard of a target audience, right? And to give you an example, uh, if you have a target audience where your audience is millennials, right? These are people from 21 to 35. If your audience is millennials, well, not all millennials are the same. Right, some millennials live in the suburbs. Some millennials live in big cities. Some live in small cities. Uh, some live in counties, and the experiences are different, even though the age range and the general information is the same. So, how do you personalize your message by translating it in a way that those specific subsets in your demographic will understand? And you can only do this by being empathetic and listening to your customer, and a lot of times prototyping ideas before you actually execute on them. Uh, and that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. And number nine is the most important. Stay consistent. Um, customers, we ultimately, consumers, we like it simple. We, we like to know that the, the company that we're working with or the, the business that we're working with is going to be the same time over. And we want to know that that company or that brand or that service is reliable. So consistency is key. And not only that, it keeps your operations focused as well. Well, Bindell, thank you. So I'm hearing you say it's not all about the logo and just getting the logo and going and making flyers and posting stuff that you've got to do that brand development and that brand identity system. And you actually touched on some things that were uh, presented in our previous uh, webinars that they talked about some of the biggest mistakes that we see startups and emerging businesses make is that they don't have a good business model. So they don't take that time out to do that business plan. So therefore that lack of clarity of what their product actually is and then that leads to a zero idea of who their customer actually is. And then people are wondering, well, I've created something. I had a great idea, but I can't seem to get anybody to look at my stuff, to buy my stuff, to call me, or worse, to even care about it. Right. And then you're like, okay, I got to pull myself back together and try to figure out what went wrong. So as a emerging or startup business, if they were to come to you, give us a glimpse of what they would expect uh, if saying, hey, I wanted some help in developing my brand. Where should I start? Yeah, first place to start is, you know, what your, uh, your individual goals are. What do, you want to, what do you want to achieve and what's the time frame in which you want to achieve it? Uh, so that's going to help me to determine whether or not you have a brand problem or a marketing problem, right? If it's a marketing problem, you will probably say like, hey, I'm losing this percent of market share. Or I had this many customers. Um, I lost this many customers this month. That might be a marketing problem. But if you say, hey, I'm having trouble to getting everybody on the same page, uh, you know, in my shop or in my company, um, then that's a brand problem. And the first thing that I would actually do is 
hey, what's the, what's, let me get a list of your values, right? And from that values, um, from that list of values, from that list that you think uh, of things that you think your brand stands for, we're going to see if that matches up with the brand position statement that you already have. And if it doesn't, we need to make sure that it does. So I'm a one person shop. I just got a twinkle in the eye. So I'm hearing you say that first, I got to get my statement, what my values are. And then right. I need to then start thinking about, well, who is my target audience? So how do you go about determining who your target audience is? Right. So one of the ways that you determine um, who your target, target audience is, is you look at what products you're selling, right? And you decide upon that audience. And then once you've decided upon that audience, um, you create a process. It's a process called design thinking where essentially you target the audience, you test or prototype your product or service within that audience, and you, you look for honest feedback. Um, based on that feedback, it allows you to, um, in steps, fix the things that are wrong with the product or the service um, based on the customers that you'll actually be selling this product or service to. It's honest feedback in real time because no customer is going to buy something that they don't fully believe in. And no business is going to be successful without listening to their customer in an authentic way. So that begins to help you find what your purpose is. Because it's about what's that special thing that you can do for your customers that maybe didn't exist or that nobody else is doing. And I heard you say it one time, it could possibly, it could be as simple as maybe customer service. Right. Sometimes there is a customer service issue or sometimes, again, there's just a simple marketing or messaging issue, right? You might be, you, you might be warm, but you're not quite there because the way that you're translating your message is just not sticking with the audience that you're trying to speak to. Mm -hmm. But overall, you got to promise your customers what they can rely on to fulfill your purpose, and you got to build that trust. Now, how do you personalize your message? You said personalize your message. Right. Personalizing your message, again, it comes from empathy, right? It comes from listening to the customers. Um, you know, uh, an example of that, you know, it, it may be the situation uh, with the Gap back in the 90s when they um, inadvertently gave FUBU a rise to fame by not understanding their consumer or not being authentic, uh, authentically engaged with the culture in a way to really understand their consumer, right? So it's just really about understanding what your, your, what your audience's pain points, what are their, uh, outside of the register, right? Outside of them purchasing your product, what is it they need to go, go through on an everyday basis? What's their process of choosing and buying? You know, really being there in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the fray of the action with them before you try to sell them something. Oh, like with State Farm and the She Shed, I relate to that. They personalize the message of saying why I need to have insurance on my She Shed. Right, exactly. So, yeah, when we talk about personalize the message. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. It's, it, it, it's the same thing with Apple, right? What you notice is that, you know, this text message has been sent from an Apple phone. Something as simple as that is, is, a, is a personal touch. Um, and it, ma it makes somebody feel a part of something bigger than just, hey, I have a phone. You feel a part of a, a, a almost, dare I say, a religion in a way when you have a great brand. So you got a great brand. You know, you're, you're, you, you, are, you talked about that brand environment, and which that's going beyond the, the logo, the color, the type, and all of that. It, you talked about that stay consistent. What are just some simple things to, to keep it consistent? Is from a, let's say from a consistency in a visual way. Yeah, so in a visual way, using the same colors, uh, using the same palette across all of your social media and website, right? So say for instance, if your website is, uh, if the tone of the website is black and white, but then I go on social media and it's red and green, I'm gonna be quite confused, right? I might not even think that you're the same company or maybe some company with that color palette may catch my attention. You might even lose a customer because you're not consistent across, uh, across channels. Or maybe making sure that your customer service is on point every time that customer uh, engages with you, right? I don't want you know, to catch you in a bad mood as a business owner one day and you know, I'm getting terrible service because you know, maybe you're not feeling well or you know, you don't, you're having a bad day for whatever reason or the business is not, not doing well that particular day. 
I still expect the same customer service. So that's a huge part of the brand remaining the same all the time because customers don't like to be surprised. And in a, in a society right now, in the digital age where the attention span is short, I mean, real short, you only have but so many opportunities to catch and keep attention. And you keep saying that authentic, that authenticity of being authentic. How, how do you reflect that? You know, what are ways of reflecting that besides just putting up your logo? Because that is repetition. That's not necessarily consistency. But besides that, how do you reflect your authenticity doing as you are creating uh, your brand identity? Yeah, um, it, it again stems from uh, close listening and empathy, right? Um, you know, we've all been in those situations where we, we, we've seen a product or a service come out and we've said, well, that's the fake so-and-so, or this is the fake so-and-so, right? It's because we know a real and a fake when we see one, right? And in order to understand your audience or in, under, in order to not be considered a fake or inauthentic, it's important that you engage with your consumers, right? Um, you ask them what their pain points are. You ask them what they like. And you take your feelings out of feedback. And a lot of times what, what it is with brands and what it is with businesses is that we're scared of honest feedback because we we're afraid that it will hurt our feelings. But whatever feedback we get from our customers, look at it as an opportunity to build your brand through correcting the things that your target audience is saying that they don't like or that they do like. Okay. So you got to be a storyteller, I'm hearing you say. Yeah, being a storyteller. Yeah, I mean, and being honest, right? Because, you know, it, the, the Nike story is about, you know, for instance, uh, it's about uh, quality, it's about um, endurance, it's about perseverance. And a lot of the athletes that they've used represent that, most being Michael Jordan, right? We can all associate with that on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. But that's a huge example. But it's the same for any business. You stand, you, you find a sword, and you stake that sword in the ground and you stand on it and people will begin to believe you. And then they will actually see themselves as extensions of your brand. Because your content, it tells your story. So you got to evaluate, is your content really helping to tell your story? Or are you just putting stuff out there that has no consistency, no integration with anything else? Right. And exactly. There are lots of different ways to, I guess, to do that because you talked about with the social media. And I know at one time I, I recall you saying that you uh, were podcasting and blogging and. Yeah. Yeah. I was podcasting. I, I've, I've done blogs. Um, and, um, you know, basically the, the key to that is, is just your consistent message in that world, right? Consistent message and consistent tone and then consistent image and consistent delivery, right? Which is most important because I can change up my message, but if my delivery doesn't change or if my delivery is not consistent with my message, that's just as bad. I could put together a pretty commercial. I could put together a pretty podcast, but if they meet me and I'm different, then that's a no-no, especially in a transparent society like today. Mm -hmm. So people that are listening, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I got a challenge this whole branding thing uh because it doesn't matter if you're a startup it doesn't matter what size you are we are hearing that branding is important and that you really need to do it before marketing well don't panic you're in good company because there are lots of incredible businesses out there and household name brands that you use right now that were in this phase and that were trying to decide what their brand they've gone through uh different uh, actually challenges as they have been defining their brand. But one of those things is that we always see that developed brands, they promise to deliver on their reason for existing. And that is one of the key things that I uh, keep hearing Bendel say over and over. So Bendel, let's yes. talk about kind of uh, some of these brands and the promises that they've made, and let's see if they've really been able to keep them. Absolutely. So basically, you know, you kind of have a working idea of what we mean by a brand. Um, so you might be thinking, how does this all work? How does this all kind of tie together? Um, so what I would like to do, um, you know, I don't know how many people we got in the room here, but if we can break into maybe groups of anywhere between two to four. So we'll have four groups. I'm sorry, we yeah. got five groups. I'm sorry, we got five groups. 
We got five groups. All right. So let's see here. Maybe groups of three, maybe? We're going to have groups of uh, three and some will have four. Okay. That's totally fine. Um, and then what I'll do is have you guys, I'm going to run something called a brand impression test. Um, and then I'm going to provide you with the logos of some of well-known companies, well-known brands. And I want each team member in the group to contribute to each, uh, either one or two words that come to mind when you see the brands or when you see these logos or names. So, um, first one is up already up on the screen. We have Apple, the NBA, one of my favorites, Sephora, Starbucks, and Amazon. And again, just want you guys to think of two, one or two words that come to mind when you see these brands or hear these names. All right, so we got room one. Um, you guys had Apple. So tell me what you came up with. You can put it in the chat. Um, for group one, it's Apple. We came up with Steve Jobs. Technology, money, um, computers, cell phone, Apple Store, Apple TV, and fruit. Okay, gotcha. All right, um, room two. Um, group, group two, we had um, the NBA. Uh, we talked about uh, the colors, uh, red, white, and blue. Those are American colors. Um, opportunity global reach as in international, uh, you know, reaching out to uh, internationally. Also product lines and opportunity. Uh, also youth, because there's a lot of youth that, you know, pick up the game and go on to college and move on to sports. And another is it's a good game. It's fun. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. So group three, um, that was my group. Um, what we got? We had makeup. We had euphoric. We had um, good body body uh, products, and there was something else we had. Gift cards. Gift cards. Gift cards. That's what it was. Thank you, Ladonna. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Perfect. Like that. Like that. Um. Let's see, Starbucks. Okay, so I had Starbucks. Um, so a couple of things I put down was um, social and experience, high-end specialty coffee, and also personal. Nice, okay, those are good. Um, and then last but not least, the giant that is Amazon, who had that? So my name is Tiffany, I was in group five. I didn't write down what everybody said, but we did talk about um, Amazon when we thought about Amazon, we thought about the word rich. We thought about quick, fast, efficient, um, great customer service. And if anybody else from my group wants to add anything I missed, you're welcome to. <laughs> um, we talked about, Amazon. my name is Lovely Morris Carter. Um, so okay. we talked about Amazon having a um, global presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things we didn't say, which um, at least I should have mentioned or somebody, is innovation, you know, because he went from selling books, you know, that was how Amazon started, selling books. Now they sell everything from tiny homes to cotton balls. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, just being that pretty much like a one-stop shop, you know, Absolutely. Just a company that has just grown to be you know, the presence that it is today, like people shop on Amazon, you know, before they may even, you know, step foot in a brick and mortar. So just the innovation and the growth. 100% correct. Basically, it's a monopoly. Let's just call it what it is, right? <laughs> and that's what I wanted to say, but I know monopolies are supposed to be illegal, but they're definitely a monopoly, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that, they're, they're a problem. But it's okay. They they <laughs> give you stuff on time. So right. <laughs> all right. So those were all awesome like answers. Like every single answer. And it was crazy is those answers are gonna uh, kind of drive home the point I wanted to make. So just kind of the reason for my experiment was 
to give you guys an opportunity to give us what you felt like these brands and logos represented and to see how close they were with the actual brand positions of the company. Uh, just so you can see exactly how deep that permeation goes. So to begin with Apple, one of my favorites to talk about because to me, you don't become a trillion dollar company without being excellent at branding, right? So when we look at Apple, um, their brand position, I've heard, uh, I heard Apple, I heard fruit. And what I, what I noticed was the succession of Apple this, Apple that, Apple TV, Apple phones, Apple, Apple you know, iMacs, iPads, iPods. Um, so Apple's brand position, um, where the tagline is think different. Their brand position are three words, simplicity, creativity, and humanity. Think of that, right? It's that simple, right? When Apple first came out, there was no such thing as a personal computer. Business, businesses were the only companies that used computers and computers were huge, clunky, and they were only for like people who were into data. And at that time, you had to be a complete geek to be into computers. But what they did is they made Apple, they made computers human. They, made them, they gave some humanity to them. So those, those examples, those words that you use, express the simplicity and the streamlining of their products. So that's an awesome job. You actually hit on a lot of points that represent the brand. Uh, the NBA, um, the NBA's tagline, or one of their taglines anyway, is that they are global ambassadors of the game. Global ambassadors of the game. So when you said, hey, red, white, and blue, um, uh, this, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a patriotic league for sure, but they consider themselves ambassadors of the game, just like in, 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 political, in political terms, America views itself as the um, ambassador of democracy at home and abroad. So it's the same way. The NBA is definitely considered a global ambassador of the game. So awesome job on those words. Sephora, this is interesting. So with Sephora, um, we had euphoric, fragrance, uh, body parts, gift cards. I told you I like both of those. Gift cards because their tagline is let's beauty together, right? Let's beauty together. So I heard, uh, you know, one of our, um, one of our team members go in and talk about how it feels good to just walk into a Sephora and, and the smell and the fragrances and the makeup and the pampering, right? Well, the tagline is let's beauty together, right? It's about being pretty together. It's about, you know, relaxation, if you will. Starbucks. Um, that is super interesting because it looks like with Starbucks, you really, you, whoever, you know, you guys hit it on the head, actually. So I heard relaxation. I heard, um, uh, uh, not boutique, but I heard, um, you know, customized coffees or different flavors of coffee. But what stood out was the relaxation part because Starbucks, they view their brand position as outgoing, youthful, personable, friendly, escape. Refreshing escape, freshness, warmth, and comfort. That's their position, right? And then Amazon position. Um, I heard customer service. I heard um, their infrastructure, right? I used to work for Amazon. They, they are a machine, absolute machine. So there's a rhyme and reason for everything that gets done around Amazon. So uh, basically their brand position, uh, they believe in low price, extraordinary convenience, instant access, and most, important, and most importantly, comprehensive selection and customer service. Again, one-stop shop for everything. Comprehensive selection, customer service. You want a book, you have it the next day. It doesn't matter if it came from California to 10 bucks too. It's going to be there the next day. So that is just an example uh, I, that I wanted to kind of point out, is that a lot of times what you feel about a brand is exactly what they intended. It's a science to it. Um, they, they, I mean, when I talk about a science, they get down into everything about their customers, data, everything. They gather everything. You think they know you better than you know you in a lot of cases. So I just wanted to point that out. And I hope everybody enjoyed that experiment um, and, and kind of gained a little something from it. Thank you so much, Bendel. I mean, this has been truly valuable and great information. And I think that I think we have that answer about what's the difference between marketing and branding now. At least I hope so. 
because you've given us some examples. You, you have given us lots of things to think about. So now we will, if there are any questions, you can type them in the chat and we'll be more than happy um, to have Bendel to address them. So hi, Michelle. Yeah. Yes, hi. hi. We do have uh, two questions at the moment. Okay. So the first one um, goes back to the nine step process to follow for your brand. It says, um, do we have to follow the one, two, three step or can we start from three and work our way around to the other steps? Yeah, so that's a great question. Again, um, you don't necessarily have to follow these in a particular order, right? What, what, what does matter is that you, you really think long and hard and on each question. So if you feel more comfortable starting with how you're going to be different, um, that's totally fine. And actually, I think that's super important because a lot of times things like that, that tends to be the hardest part, right? We, we know we have a great idea. We know that we can do it. Um, we may even know that we have the resources for it, right? But just something as simple as differentiating yourself can kind of be a, a repetitive process of prototyping, getting response and feedback, and then trying it again. So you don't have to follow it in, in that particular order. It just matters that you follow those steps. But you don't want to jump into number seven first. No, you don't, you don't want to do that. So things where they're action oriented, if you don't have a brand established before you start uh, doing action oriented items, that's the wrong track to go on because you may end up putting a, a message out there that you're going to end up having to retract later when you do decide to focus on your brand, right? So you want to always focus on the brand first and then the action steps later. Okay. Okay, and the next question is, is regarding your target audience, how do you know you're not leaving out an important group of people when trying to choose your target audience? Right, so um, the, that's, that's a great question, and I want to answer it by something that might seem a little shocking, right? If you are a, uh, a focused brand, you will actually leave out people. Um, you will definitely leave out some people. The natural, the natural inclination, like when you build a business, is to try to include as many people as possible because we're thinking of it in terms of sales and rightfully so, right? We want to be the most successful company that we can be. The problem is that it can take you off track of what your actual brand message is. It could actually also lead you to doing things and selling things that you didn't even intend to do or sell, right? So naturally, you will, you will leave some people out. But I think the key to knowing who your target audience is, is prototyping and testing what your product or service is in that market, and then getting the feedback and seeing how people respond to it. And it'll let you know exactly who's for it, who's against it, why, and how you can fix it. Well, that was awesome. And at the moment, we don't have any further questions. Okay, let's see. Here is uh, Ben Dell's contact information and yes. how you can reach him. Yes. So I, have, I currently have a website in beta um, that will be launching within the next three weeks. I also have, um, uh, you can reach me by my uh, email, uh, info at branthropology, uh, dot branthropology, I'm sorry, at gmail.com. That's info dot branthropology at gmail.com. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach me via that uh, email address. Um, and then uh, as we, you know, converse, and if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, send you my business phone number um, via email as well. If you have any questions you want to text or you want to talk about any sort of issues that you're having with, uh, with your brand. Bendel, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we want to thank everyone um, that joined us. And we hope that you walked away with, you know, that it doesn't matter uh, if you are taking control of your brand now or if it's going to be five years from now. But whatever you do, you know that you've got to do branding and that it will affect your marketing. And it's all a matter of whether you want to spend time telling your customer who you are and what you have, or do you want your customer defining your brand? 
So net, join us next week uh, for our final series presentation, and it's going to be called Get Inspired. Uh, we'll be meeting other entrepreneurs who will be sharing how their passion turned into profit and sources of inspiration that will make your business succeed even in a crisis. Have a great rest of your week. Continue to embrace your inner entrepreneurial spirit, and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.